Level 2, this is Sports Ranch. I am Gabriel Ranch on a Sports Good Radio and Television Networks. We'll welcome back Sirius XM in a couple of minutes. We have all these little in-between uh, segments all over the place. All right, we'll get Drew Martin out of here in a couple of minutes uh, as well. So the Buffalo Bills host the Kansas City Chiefs, and I'm a positive thinker. And I'm coming in, uh, you know what? And I, what I love about this, too, is when they asked C.J. Stroud, they said, you know what, your number one weapon is Nico Collins. And he goes, you know, Ohio State to Michigan. Was that strange at all? I like what C.J. Stroud said. He goes, no, he's my guy. <laughs> I know. Exactly. Like, like they, like they think, oh, yeah, like they're in the NFL now. Well, oh, this is weird throwing a guy on Michigan. But Nico Collins has been just amazing. But if Houston wins, guys, if Houston win and Buffalo win, the Buffalo Bills are hosting the Houston Texans. And if if Green Bay can knock off San Francisco – Suddenly, in the Detroit Lions win, suddenly the Lions are hosting the Packers to go to the Super Bowl. We could have some pretty wild Super Bowl matchups. And I think I speak for everybody. We don't want Kansas City and San Francisco. We've already seen this before. No. Let's get Buffalo and Detroit or something wild. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, some wild. Love like, it. Yeah, <laughs> Buffalo and the Packers or Houston and, you know, Green Bay or something. But, um, uh, what do you think about the Bills as a Dolphin fan, uh, Drew? How far do you think we're going to go? Uh, I think the sky's the limit, Gabe. I really do. You're playing the best football at the best time. Uh, you got a quarterback that's, you know, run, pass. He's looking good. He's throwing the ball well. I'll tell you, Gabe, I like Buffalo in this situation. I do being at home. It's almost like the script has changed. They played so many times in Arrowhead. I think Josh Allen gets them sideways. I'll tell you this, though. That minus two in the hook number – it's making me pump the brakes on betting them. It really is because I can just see line. this game land in one, land in two, and the, the Bills moving on, yet you losing your ticket, and that always hurts as a sports better. So I actually went on the total of this game, Gabe. The first time they played December 10th, week 14, 20 to 17, landed under in that game. The closing line was 49. But uh, weather-wise, you know, this time of year, it was 40 degrees. It was a nice day, minimal wind, no rain in uh in kansas city that day now we're going to buffalo below zero celsius what do we have it here 20 degrees fahrenheit 15 mile an hour winds projected as high as 30 i think that changes the landscape both of these two teams gabe 11 and 23 to the under year to date i think people forget these defenses are pretty good top five scoring defenses both of them so people pointing towards josh allen patrick mahomes quarterbacks kind of get the media these two defenses are very good. I wouldn't be surprised if this stays under. Kansas City's played four straight to the under, 45 and a half right now. I bet the under in this game, Gabe. And you look at Buffalo, the, the Buffalo-Miami game. Shout out to everyone joining us on Sirius XM Channel 159. Uh, this is Sports Rage on the Sports Good Radio Network. So, yeah, Buffalo played to the under against Miami. They played uh, the Pittsburgh game, got going a little bit. But Buffalo had yeah. the big lead there. But there is something about Buffalo now. They're just, they do feel like, you know what, they they peaked at the right time for once. Not too soon. They've been playing desperate football. And if they're going to win the Super Bowl, they're going to have to win nine games in a row. They're up to six right now. Right? So their backs were against the wall. They had a 5% chance of uh, winning a division before. They win a division. Here we go. And I think they're going to beat the Kansas City Chiefs uh, as well. All right. Um... Any college basketball on the way out here for you, Drew, at all? Late night any late night action, in-game, or what are you doing? Have you got any games going? Yeah, you want to join me in-game. I'm sweating out on uh, over 127 and a half in Middle Tennessee and UTEP right now. It's a sweat fest, Gabe. So Conference USA on this over. I love this guy. You're looking good. Yeah, it's 134 yeah. and a half in-game right now. Yeah. Yeah, I'd go up and over, guys. I, I, I've been doing some research all day long. One thing I love coming into college basketball, early conference play, is see how these referees in each conference are calling fouls, how they're calling the games. And therefore, you get like a three-game sample size, which we have right now. If they're calling a lot of fouls in those conferences, bet those conferences to the over. They've been calling a lot of fouls in Conference USA. That's that's part of the reason I got MTSU and UTEP, the minors, love, up and love over that, the over. Love that, I always talk about question, that. I love betting in-game in in game over when there's fouls. Gonzaga and Pepperdine are tied 40-40 at the half. Pepperdine's getting seven and a half. What do you guys think about that game? Gonzaga aren't the same Gonzaga team of past years. Damn right they're not. 
You're right. So be care- you, you got to be careful. I'd say, you know what, it's down to six and a half. Now, I would lean actually uh, with the wave uh, plus six and a half, to be honest. Uh, Wazoo and Stanford are tipping off here. Stanford are uh, four and a half point uh, home favorites against Washington State. I wouldn't uh, I wouldn't be I trusting like Stanford late points, actually. And and the Dons, the Dons and the Lions, Loyola Marymount are getting ten and a half uh, up there in the Bay against San Francisco, guys. I love the Dons. What a name for for a team, <laughs> the San Francisco Dons. San Francisco That's Dons, one of my yeah. favorite. <laughs> yeah, Dons. I don't know. It's Stanford at home, though. I, it's okay. I like to get out to a yeah, Don game cool. sometime. You're right, Marenzi. We should do that. Remember, <laughs> I've never been. remember Actually, we talked about I have been like. A Cleveland You've State been to a game. San Francisco Dons game? Have you really, Drew? I, I went Amazing. to a San Francisco Dons game in the uh, WCC tournament in, in okay, Las Vegas. No, okay. that's, 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 cool. that's cool. That's cool. But I'm talking about a home game. Yeah. No, never been. There's like, <laughs> random, <laughs> there's like random schools that I'm not even a fan of that I'm sort of like, yeah. Like, yeah, I've always talked about it. Like, Cleveland State's my Horizon League team. Yeah. And my, my there's just something State. about it. Like Cleveland yep. State, I'll go to the Cleveland State game, and then I'll go to Northfield uh, Northfield Park Racetrack, which isn't that far off. It's like the ultimate degenerate special. Get drunk at a Cleveland State Viking basketball game and then go to the racetrack uh, after in, in the middle of nowhere in Ohio, <laughs> which could be a pretty good time. <laughs> and uh, it's always bothered me, too. I like to do it sometime. I like to do the L.A. tour, Drew. Uh, just, you know, one night go to like a Cal Poly slow game and then to an Irvine game, <laughs> go to a Loyola Marymount game in downtown LA. You know what I'm saying? Just sort of like, like there's, there's literally like people don't realize it. There's like yeah. 10 teams in the LA area, 12 teams. And it's funny because you bet on these teams and you, and, and you, you go by the school and some of them, they look like high schools and stuff. They're so small. And you're it's like, wow, true. that's 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 Riverside. Oh, that's who I'm betting all the money on. <laughs> like you realize, you realize what you're actually doing. You're like, man, I that's remember a you were playing there. Oh, like, remember when we went to the Super Bowl? You're like, that's Leola Marymount. I'm like, what? You go, that's it. <laughs> and I'm like, yeah. okay. I go, where's Riverside? <laughs> like, where's Irvine? No, that they, it literally looked like a prison. Like it didn't look like a it didn't look like a a, a basketball facility game. It was weird. Eh? It was so small. Don't you think? Well, it's downtown. It's it's nice when yeah. you get like sort of like in, into it closer. But yeah, there's just there's a million of these schools. They're all over the place. Um, yep. Great, great stuff as always, uh, Drew. We'll see you Sunday night. And in fact, I guess you're going to be on during the Bills game, right? As as the Bills game goes on, you're going to be coming on right after it. Right after it, Gabe. Football full circle, guys. Catch, catch me Sunday night at Drew Martin Betts on Twitter, and I'll tell you, Gabe, let's do that. Let's start in L.A. We'll also hit San Diego, San Diego State, UC San oh, Diego, dude. and let's finish it with the Tijuana t- Tigres game in uh, Tijuana. Gabe you know wants we got to, to go to, to, go to Vegas. Craig Center. Nah, nah, it works. San Diego, no, I'm good. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. And because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Fan. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid.
and I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. We got a bunch of games going on in the National Hockey League uh, right now, including the Seattle Kraken and the Edmonton Oilers, three-two for the Oil uh, right now over the Kraken. It is four-three uh, for the Toronto Maple Leafs. Fifteen minutes left. Mitch Marner just missed an opportunity to make it five-three, four-three. Yep. Leafs. Fifteen minutes left. Leafs are minus four-fifty. The Flames are plus three-twenty right now. I'm on the LA Kings tonight. The Kings and the Preds are still scoreless. Um, Fourteen and a half left in the second period of play. New in-game total is three and a half, which is super light. And let, let's wait this out, and hopefully they don't score again for the next couple of minutes. But if there's a two and a half, we're going to jump on board and pull the trigger on the over. Arizona and Vancouver. I told you guys before the game started that I think Vancouver's going to win, but it's not going to be easy. Yeah. It's their first game back after uh, on the road for two weeks. So it's 1-1 in this game. They're getting all that they can handle from uh, the Coyotes. And the New York Rangers are screwing us. It's 2 nothing for the Vegas Golden Knights, and I said it before the game started that I never win with Vegas games, and it's real. Like, I, I can't bet these games anymore. Thanks for nothing, New York. Rangers down 2 nothing, Cam. I'm going to tell That's you something, Renzi. You know the best thing about you is? It's like you don't even do any, like, golf bets, and we do the show on Wednesday with Brady, and you go, you know what? I think I like Cam Young and – Sure, Brown Olison, the guy who took yeah, the leak the on the plane. Yeah, the board. They're and both they're in both, first place. They, they were both first-round <laughs> leaders. With like, hey, they might have been with four guys, but you saw off your bet, and you even if you're going forty or fifty bucks, you're going to win like a dime. Yeah, I'm so, an idiot. Like, you know, I good, say this all bet. the time. This is like the third time it's happened in four months to golf, me, where I pick a guy it, he's first place after the first day. You've been good tired at golf, of not betting it. You got to bet it. You're good at it now. You're just your vibe. Yeah, but it's good. just. Yeah, yeah, but it's just my vibes. Like, I don't do all this tea to green yeah. stuff. And stuff. I just sort of look. Do. I'm like, yep. uh, I know the trends a little bit. I'm like, yeah, no, he's coming off a of back surgery. Yeah, he's got four top tens yep. in his last days. But I'm pretty good. Like, I'm a good gut sort of guy. Let's see what it is now, um, the updated numbers. So Cameron Young was 20 to 1. He's plus 650 now. Yeah. And Olsen was 25 to 1, and he's 12 to 1 now. Not bad odds still, 12 to 1. I could live Great with that. Great picks by you. I'll give you credit. But, Marinci, I'm going to tell you one thing, and I don't give you any advice about whatever you're your own man. Every time you throw at a guy, play him in the first round because well, you know I'm what? I'm going to from now on. Yes. Like, that money. Yeah, you but then whenever the I do, NFL. I lose. <laughs> I lose. Uh, like, but last you know week, what? I like you Max hit... Homa. That didn't work out. But, anyways, yeah. But the thing is, game uh, though, you hit a couple of those. You're playing. I like, know. That's the whole thing. Like you're playing for yeah. seven or eight weeks. That's all. That's I know. All I know. I'm a moron. I don't want to think about it. I'm, I'm you're not a moron. Place. I'm more of a moron. I bet on everybody. I'm an idiot. Like don't worry. It's like about when I picked it. a guy yeah, at ninety to one to win the DP one last month for two months ago, out of the blue, I said, "Yeah, check out this guy. He's coming." <laughs> and it won. Remember that one? Um, yeah, Valamaki. The fin- yeah, Valamaki, the Finnish dude. All right, uh, mm-hmm. let's bring in uh, Sean Hicks. Sean, you bet on golf. Eggs. If you want to, no, like, I, you don't have like, I don't even know what you're... Life, bet on golf. 
Yeah, no, yeah, I'm like, you need I'm, more all problems. I think of golf is like mini golf down at Chadwick, mini golf down the shore. <laughs> and I know in a farmhouse, I got to hit the middle of the farmhouse so it doesn't go out the sides. Otherwise, I'll never get that par three. <laughs> the windmill. I love you. Yeah, the, yeah, the windmill's nice. I like the windmill's easy right through it. Yeah. That's a hole in one. Seven out of ten. I got that. You know, you do that for 40 years. You better master that. But yeah, this stuff, might as well, it's like Chinese arithmetic. I don't even know what you're talking about. <laughs> kind of like hockey goals. Math, Although I do have the math, under tonight in that Vegas. Uh, you say Chinese arithmetic? Math is math. There's no language for yeah, math. math There's is math. What, what, how is Chinese math is different it, than exactly. American math? I went, I went anyway, to summer school for algebra. Let's not get into this shit right now. I, 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 I had to like... go to summer school for algebra my sophomore year. <laughs> <laughs> freshman year. Sorry. Yes, sorry. I love you, Higgs. I'm just You're the Chinese best. arithmetic. I'm like, I can't say that too loud. I told my son, I said, <laughs> no. hey, he's like, I, I said, I was going on a show. He's like, oh. With, with, the, with the redhead guy, I'm like, yeah. He's like, oh, there was wacky Canadians. I'm like, yeah, they're wacky Canadians. <laughs> Those <are> wacky Canadians. <laughs> hey, I, I'm, he I'm, likes I'm how I make the, wa- the caribou jokes. Caribou and I'm anything syrup. but wacky. I'm anything <laughs> but wacky. Um, all right, so let me just check in on the Sacramento King game uh, right now. Them? They're losing by 13. Pacers such a, went out like three, four bodies cool. tonight. No, no Halliburton. They traded Bruce Brown. They traded Nawara, and um, they don't have Siakam yet. And they're winning. That's what Sacramento are, man. They're flaky. The total is two forty nine and a half right now. It's seventy to fifty seven. Uh, Oklahoma City Thunder are up ten on the Utah Jazz uh, with uh, three and a half minutes left. And the Grizzlies are surprising the T Wolves. You never know in the NBA. So what well, about I mean, Bath? Had, what do you bet on, Sean? You bet on the NBA I, or the NHL or sometimes. just NFL and MLB? What do you bet on? No, I, I I go a little light into hockey and and NBA. Like like combined, I'm at like sixty games total between both of those sports. Although I did, I had Portland tonight, and I got the Vegas under, and I had the uh, I took the Blackhawks plus a goal and a half tonight minus one. Yeah, so, well, you lost that one. Sabres yeah, I lost won that. three nothing. They, they have three nothing. But, you know, that Pacer game, it was kind of like last night's Toronto game. Like, with these trades, you don't know how these teams are going to react. Like, you figured Toronto had a nice little run after the, the, the other trade with the Knicks. This one, they get Pacers. Like, how do you how do you bet that game thinking how they're going to respond? Like, are they going to come out? They're shorthanded. We're going to come out and play. Sacramento. You know what I do, Sean? You didn't even show up. You didn't when even everyone show up thinks the half. team is going to be crap, me and Gabe have talked about That's this. That's when you jump on them. That, Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Guys, guys playing for contracts. Guys playing for their woman. Guys, like but that's, I love the, the fact that so... all these guys, oh, they're player, they're stars around. Uh, you bet, you bet the oh, other. Oh, the way. Flames that's just me. tied the game. I knew that would happen. Yeah, oh, Four it was four. a horrible old... goal game. It was horrible. horrible. Minnesota, like laying double digits. I like Minnesota. Like if I'm taking a future to win, I'll take I'll take a Minnesota future to win the NBA. But that's a bad spot. You're coming home after you know back to back spot, a road back to home, laying double digits. That's Memphis, the thing. Memphis, nobody think is good. You know, it's, That's the I'd thing, rather just man, stay away. Memphis, I'd rather just stay away. No betting allowed. They lose. No betting. They allowed. lose John Morant, uh, obviously, and now now Desmond Bain gets hurt. The other yep. night, they don't have any bodies, and they beat the Golden State Warriors. Now yep. tonight, people are like, "There's no way in hell this happens again." The T Wolves lay twelve and a half to them now. <laughs> and here's yeah, Memphis to- up. Here's Memphis leading them right now, fifty six uh, fifty three. The second half just started. You know what? I'm going to jump in on the T Wolves here, minus four and a half. Just don't bet I'll be honest. Please, no, please, I'm cold please, in the man. last 24 hours, though. I'm getting screwed please. all the I time. Just, I just cast an easy, never in doubt New Mexico State money line. Can't beat that one. Nice. Ten, down 10 at half, come back, win. Easy win. Yeah, I was going to say, it was in <laughs> doubt a little bit, wasn't it? <laughs> yeah, that's what yeah. I like the joke. You throw that out, never in doubt. People get upset. You put that on Twitter. I had Cincy the other night. I think they were like three or three and a half. And they won in like overtime by four or something. And oh man, I was like never in doubt. And I got like some messages in my DMs like, what are you talking about? Uh, I'm like, where's the sar where's the can we get a sarcasm font already on Twitter for the sarcasm? I was uh I was on them too. I just want you to know when people like you because I went I, I had that game too. The other night I had that, I had Baylor and I had N C State. And people oh, on Baylor Twitter were like one. uh Yeah, people were like, Great job, Marenzi. You know, went two and one in college basketball last night. And I said, your only loss was in overtime. And I'm thinking, yeah, but I also won in overtime. And I got lucky exactly. late in the other one. <laughs> so, exactly. Listen, you can you can flip a coin with a lot of these games late. 
But that was a wild game. I that tease because Cincinnati were down too, bro, by like six with like two minutes left. Yeah, I, I, I had them on a Monday night. I was like, oh God, they're down 67 61 with 138 or Loser. something left. And boom, they came back. College tonight, I didn't pull the trigger. Um, at least yet. I'm sort of looking for a spot. These late these West Coast games started. Like I said, I didn't trust Stanford laying four and a half, and I didn't pull the trigger. Washington State are up 16-13 right now, and it's already just plus one and a half right now. The Dons are up on the Lions 11-4 early. Uh, Long Beach are just tattooing Hawaii right now, 66-47. to 47. Well, that's why um, it comes com- to the mainland. They don't do that. I like Long Beach. They're not as good as they used to be. I know, but that, they're still... That- Cal Irvine are the money makers in that conference. That's a good, the good basketball team. Yes, the yeah, they are, actually, baby. you're right. Yeah, you're right. The That's Anteaters the best program going there. They're in a dog right, fight well, with San Diego right now. The last I checked, I was like, I thought it was tied up. They were. It was a close game. Who I don't know where it is now. There's two San Diego. It's hard to keep started. There's too many San Diego. Yeah, it's hard to keep up. There's like five of them now. Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed fairly Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going yeah. to be the storyline. And I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on Sports Grid. There's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event. The atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on Sports Grid. Utah Jazz going on a late run here right now. It's 128 to 124. The Jazz have been smoking hot. They've won nine of their last 10 games. Uh, the Thunder up 128, 124. 
with a minute left. 63.58. I just clicked the over. What did I get? Uh, 218 and a half. So I took over 218 and a half in the T-Wolf game and the uh, the Memphis Grizzlies. And I'm thinking about jumping in. I'm kind of chasing now. I'm not going to lie. I'm going to jump in on the Pacers and the Kings over 249 and a half. As it's just yeah. one of these stupid track Ooh, meet games, right? That's bold, Gabe. That's a lot of points. A lot of yeah, points. Yeah, but they have 127 in the first half. Sacramento yeah. won't stop. Like, they're going to go on a run here yeah. right now. You like that, Sean, that play? I, I, I like that one better than the other one. Better than the Minnesota play. Thanks for the positivity. I like Kind of, you want comfortable lives? That's why I tell my kids, I can keep my kids comfortable lives. Comfortable lives. He's telling the truth. truth. It's all good. It's all good. Okay, so what do you like this week, Sean, in the NFL? All right. Um, I don't even know who's the, who's the Saturday games. I don't even have lined up. Let me let them up uh, first. Baltimore uh, and uh, Houston? I like Baltimore oh. and the under. I think the under is going to be in play. Houston's, they're going to take their like shots the downfield. But, yeah, I think this is an under game. I mean, forget about who cares what the weather. It'll be chilly. It's still a dome team. It's great that their rookie quarterback and head coach did a good job. But I look for Lamar and company to take care of business here. I think this is going to be low scoring, you know, 26-10, 24-10, like something low. It's not going to be an ex- crazy explosive game. They'll take their shots, Texans, but they're not going to exploit – uh, the Ravens, like they did Cleveland. Cleveland, for whatever reason, could not play on the road. The defense just never came on the road and kind of skewed score with the two pick sixes. You're not getting out. They're gonna, they're gonna I run like the ball style, down Houston's game. throat. That's they're exactly gonna run the, the way ball. I look at that game, like 29-13 for Ravens. Cam, like that's the, the way the I'm Colts looking game. at it. If if the Colts run the ball on fourth and one, the Texans aren't even in the playoffs. So you're. Not, Harbaugh is not going to make that mistake down here. They're going to run the ball and just pummel these guys all game. They can't stop their run, and they have no run game themselves. So it's, we're going to take a couple shots downfield. Maybe you get one. Maybe get a couple incompletes. Interception. I don't know. I think Baltimore – I know you said in your last segment, Green Bay's the the, the better – the uh, two bigger dogs to maybe pull off the upset. I, I got to agree. I think Baltimore takes care of business, covers the number, and uh, goes under the total here as well. I'll tell you and guys one thing. Game. I'll just say mm-hmm. – I'm not intimidated by the weather in Baltimore on Saturday. Nor, yep. That's going to be like, like in so, the 40s. It's not. No, it's, it's, it's lower not, than that. It's lower than that. But everyone's talking about, as oh, long as outdoors, there's no wind this. and snow, it's, it's, it is what it is. It's still a dome team outside. I'm not a fan of taking dome teams or South Florida teams coming up and playing in elements they're not used to playing in, you know, three months out of the year. It's just – you know, it's it's going to be 28 degrees. That's it's not a little like, chilly. That's, that's no, but it's, it's, that's nothing. But I, nothing. I got one team in Baltimore and who, sunny. who plays. But I got a team that plays in this kind of weather in Cincy. I can't and, argue and, that. And they, love, they love that kind of nonsense. I don't know how Houston's going to respond to that kind of stuff. I mean, some Miami was windmill tackling. How, is Houston My ready to start though, cracking guys? I would make an ar- a bigger argument that the game goes over than I would Houston because it wouldn't surprise me as you it, look. It wouldn't surprise me if Baltimore put up twenty eight in this game on them. Yeah. Right. It, it, let's say they get to twenty seven, twenty eight or so. But I think Houston will be able to score. They come up with big plays. Like it's it's kind of like on paper you don't know how they're going to do it. It's Nico Collins. Yeah. I mean the You're guy's right, a lot Gabe. faster than people realize. They get him the ball. He the yards after the catch. They yep. scheme plays. They get guys open. Singletary's running really hard and well right now. They do come up with big plays. Like, you figure they're no, not the going no to, game. but they do find a way to do it. Baltimore is one of the teams that doesn't give up huge plays. That's one of no, the best No, you're right. They're the best pass yeah, defense in the NFL, yeah, so we'll see they, what happens. They right? let you nickel and dime you, right? So so Houston's going to have to have some magic. I'm, I'm with Higgs on this one. I, the, th- the, I think Baltimore time... wins this game by, like, 16. And I'm sure you guys know this. Last time they were the one seed, they lost to the Titans, right? They lost 20 something to, yeah, yeah. to the yeah. Titans. Only, Lamar's only got that, one playoff win. Yeah. So make, they got a lot to prove two. here. And, and, and Houston's not going to smash mouth them to death like a Tennessee team was going to do. You know, so again, I think they're going to, uh, where's the run game for Houston? And they're not stopping. They're not stopping the Ravens on a run. They'll go back and Lamar will go for 100 something yards on the ground. There's a prop. Pull up the prop for Lamar rush, rushing yards. I say he's going over 90. 
I'll go 100 plus for him. I think he's going to have it. <laughs> wow. Really? I think you're, it's a, you're an animal, Higgs. Is, no, you animal. know what, it's, and, and the Cowboys lost in their kind of statement game where they had to come out and win a game. They just don't even show up. Uh, this coach is a lot better than McCarthy. So I don't think this is a spot for them to come lay an egg. I think this is a, you know, this is our year kind of thing. And we Lamar have to is 52 and a half. The thing about oh, Baltimore, he'll, he'll too, and Gabe, Gabe brought this up, Higgs, they've been disappointing before. Like, if you can't lay down the smack this year, like, we have yes. a problem. Like, this and is he's the thing. Healthy. He's you got, been healthy you, this you got year, a bye Lamar. week, you're healthy. Andrews the, is coming back. Plays, I don't care if you use him as a decoy. You know what I'm talking about. So this is the when thing. He if plays, they can't get it done now, we have a big problem with this team in the He post-season. plays, he wins. They win when they play. Yep. I mean, last year they had who? Hundley, Hundley was backup. He was quarterbacking in Cincinnati last year. I mean, like, no, they no, almost no. won that You're game. You're home. Let's get rid of Exercise the demons. Come in here, win this game, going away, and, and move on to Bills or Kansas. I, I think the Bills next week. I think that's uh, that's what they're going to get next week. But I hope so. That'll be Buffalo, the, the next game. Buffalo, Buffalo or Kansas Baltimore. City game. I'm hoping yeah. Houston can knock off Baltimore so uh, Buffalo get to host the game next week. But we'll see what happens. Be, Buffalo's got to win Listen, the game I, first. I think Buffalo's winning, and I don't think it's close. I think they're that's a team, although they're winning like ugly, like Allen still turns the ball over, and it's a close kind of games, and they're getting their turnovers. Well, you know what? That's good. You're forced to turnovers. You, you're winning games when you might not supposed to win. They, they beat Kansas City three straight regular season. They lost the two championship games. This is uh, this is a huge game for Josh Allen. As much as he's a fumble machine or turnover interception, whatever it is, the guy's got forty five touchdowns this year. I mean, like, what do you think? He's ba- run- what do you think Buffalo wins by Higgs? I'm thinking like seven think, to ten. I think yes, yeah, probably like ten points. Kansas City, they got a good defense. This game is like the game they played in Kansas City. Buffalo went up early. It was fourteen nothing or whatever it was, and then they whatever happened. Kansas City defense. They have good defense, but this game will be probably around the same kind of thing. I just need KC scoring. We got Kelsey, you got Rice. I mean, Pachenko's going to run. Buffalo's defense is not terrible. And how, Kansas City on the road in the playoffs, first time I'm seeing that. I mean, this isn't the Super Bowl. Usually you get your teams at home, and it's a huge edge. I mean, Bills at home, I just, since that Denver loss, that crazy loss, I said, if they got hot, that's the dangerous team. And they're, they're beginning of the year, this was a team that was thought of to be a Super Bowl contender, right? One of the top Three, four teams for winning the Super Bowl, right? That it's not. Now you've won what eight in a row, playing with confidence, winning all types of games, close games, turnover six games. Six. I mean, <laughs> that's all. Six. I th- it feels like eight. Yeah, because yeah, no, yeah, yeah, they had that. Feels like eight. They should have yeah, yeah, yeah. But they yeah. should have been. See, I look at the Philly game as a win because that's Philly the got last lucky. loss. Well, oh, Elliot hit, hit a 62-yard knuckle ball. Like, how did that Come even on. go in? That was you so know, stupid. Uh, that's yeah. the team I don't want to play. That's I, I mean Baltimore is going to be. I, I'll probably take the points in that game next week when they play in 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 Baltimore. I might because they're just dangerous. As much as I don't know, that's going to be a great game. That's that's going to be the Super Bowl matchup because I think uh, on the other side of things, uh, I do like the points in Tampa Bay. I mean, why is that line at six and a, it opened at six five and a half? Like people are just going to pour on the Lions. They love the Lions in August. They're not loving them in January here. Um, so you got oh, it Tampa. opened five even. There was a there was yeah. a five briefly, and it got bet up to what? five and a half, and then six. I'm hoping and then it six goes and a half. Yeah, I'm hoping. I love Usually the Lions, but that's I'm too waiting. many points, Eggs. Too many points. I want more. I want more points with Tampa. They're, they're going to put up some points because the, the Detroit cornerbacks. It's, I mean, how they Baker's a decent quarterback. Yeah, this He's game's not going bad. over yeah. forty-eight and a half. There's going to be yeah, points. So what, do you over. Think, what do you think the score is, Marenzi? Like, I'm, are you thinking like what, 34, 31? Yeah, I think Tampa covers on like a crazy game. Like 27-24. 27-24 Lions win. 51 gets you there. That's fine. Yep. I, I think maybe a little more than that. I like uh, Tampa team totals, what, 20 There could and a half, be a little more. I, Look, it's indoors. Weather's points. not a factor. The Lions exactly. are going to blitz Baker. He's going to hit a couple of big plays. Evans yep. dropped a big touchdown pass last week. He's not going to do that Put again. Like he'll, no. he'll step yep. up. Godwin's no. a badass in these big games, as we see. He's going to get open. The Lions secondary is going to have a problem, like with Tampa's yes. wide receivers. Like they actually... better get a pass rush on Baker. <laughs> I mean, know again, the thing about, spot... know the thing about Tampa is, Higgs, know what it is? Vita Vea gave the kid from – like, he's an animal too. Like, I think people – like – I love the Lions. Oh, their defense uh, is with good. My the heart. Their defense yes. has been good for the last couple of years. They're being disrespected. They're being disrespected. 
because yeah. it's Baker. This Nobody Vancouver, gave him a shot. This Vancouver Coyote game is getting like hostile and ugly. There's just another fight, and there's like a nearly a little mini brawl. I don't know if Remember, Buddy Gabe, the Coyotes Pocket stepped on him the on the Coast Canucks the Coyotes. Here. Anger, like it's no, no, it's there's something. There. Canuck games it's aren't real. usually like this, but it's it's like it's real, real. Like they're going at it. They're they're like stepping on each other and stuff like that. Okay, hey, so we, we agree as far as the Bucks. Um, mm-hmm. We agree as far as the Bucks are concerned. And um, so, what's what's your take on the Packers? We've got about a minute here with you before we get you out of here. What do you, what do you think after the Packers and the Niners? I grabbed the under fifty and a half. I I don't. I like Green Bay is not going to just run. They're not running through San Francisco. This isn't a team. Dallas is like, hey, we're down 34 to 10. It's okay. Uh, you could run the ball. We think they're up. I don't know what the, that defense thinking. You're not getting that Shanahan. They're, they're not going to run all over this team. Uh, I like the under. I think CMC is a little more banged up than what they're laying into. You know, I mean, I know everybody's banged up in the end of January. But I think it's going to be a close game. I think the Green Bay defense is, is good, solid. Uh, but, again, not, not a crazy high-scoring game. I love Just you, Sean Hicks. Yeah! Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some golf prices. And we're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, he's a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Pick. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid. There's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like, uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for, for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game. I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do. We can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the game start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. Thanks to Sean Higgs for kicking it with us. I am Gabriel Moranzi. 
the Vancouver Canucks just scored with like 58 seconds left in the second period. And we talk about this often in hockey. Bad teams give up goals in the last minute of the period. Good teams score goals in the last minute of the period. Right? And I swear, watching the Canucks for as long as I have over the last few years, they used to be the kings of this. It'd be like, come on, guys, it's 1-1. Oh, my God, you gave up a goal with six seconds left in the period. And it changes the dynamic of the game so much. And boom, good teams score. They're like, we're getting the effing lead before this period's over. Vancouver on a mission, man. And boom, they finally buried one. Joshua with another one. The grinders are coming through for the Canucks tonight. 2-1, 30 seconds left. They're out shooting in 2013. And a uh, pretty hard-hitting, fight-filled, and um, chippy hockey game. Nice old-school hockey game going on here tonight. In Vancouver, the Leafs are up next in the VNC on Saturday. Let's bring in Big Card Julio uh, right now in Denver. What's going on, Julio? How you doing tonight? I'm doing well, Gabe and Cam. Always great to hang out with you guys on a Thursday evening. All right, good to see you, uh, Julio. <laughs> Bam! Julio Bam. came in there like this. It's all business. See, unlike, unlike Babano, he's like, yeah, oh, Gabe, uh, he goes, Babano, give me a hockey pick. Well, you know, I'll tell you about the... I don't know what? what happened to Bob. Yeah, I don't know what happened to Babano today or something. I didn't really see. I yeah. saw a bit, but I don't know if his Twitter got hacked or the Ice Guys Twitter got hacked or something. I saw Babano like talking about how he lost control of his Twitter account and they were suspended, or somebody else took control really? of it. And yeah, yeah, I don't know. Like I, I've got a lot of things going on, so I was sort of I put it on the list of things like to check in with later. <laughs> I saw it. I was like, I'll ask him later. But then I saw him on Twitter. Because I was like, what did Babano do? What would Babano do to get suspended on Twitter? He's not the Nothing. most controversial person, like, on Twitter. Oh. So I thought, oh, did he violate some copyright with his music videos or something like that? But um, I don't know what happened. It seems like the Ice Guys got their Twitter account. I don't know what happened. We'll, we'll find out about it. We'll ask him about it. We're still trying to get to the bottom of Dave Sharapan not winning $72,000. Oh, you didn't call Cardano yet and see what's going on, or what's the deal? No, I don't. I don't know what happened with that. Because I, you know I saw I, there was a. I saw a tweet on on Sunday that he won seventy two thousand yeah. dollars, and I, while while I was happy for him, I'll admit it it depressed me because I I won like I won a bunch of bets in a row, and I looked at my account. I was like, man, pretty good day. And then I look on Twitter, Julio, and I see Dave won seventy two thousand dollars. I'm like, well, f me. I was like, this sucks. I was like, I didn't, like, you know, really? I was like, I thought to myself, I was like, all that work you put in, you won $2,000. You know, I'm God. like, this guy just won I, I 72K. Won, like, I won three times, but Dave won 72 times. Hey, I'm honest <laughs> enough to say it out loud, right? I'm like, I saw it. I was like sitting there. I'm like, this guy. I'm like, can't believe it. I was like, good for him. But I'm like, I can't believe it. Here I am winning two dimes like some sort of loser here. And then I find out it's not even real after. I got to be honest with you, Marenzi. I only got skeptical when I looked at the score, and I'm like, did D really bet that score? It's such a well, crazy score. Who the hell would have taken Green Bay to win 48-32 at 1,500 to 1? That's what That's it was. It was 1,500 to 1. It was 1,450 yeah. to 1, to be exact. Wow. Yeah, 48-32, as if. <laughs> well, I thought... I just thought I was like, how many damn ticket scores did this guy play to get forty eight thirty two? Like, you Excellent mean? point, Gabe. That's Great what I was point. thinking too. I go, this guy's played fifty, like like he's buying Nevada tickets and just like, yeah, exactly. But I no 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 who no. knows? It didn't happen because if it would have happened, not even with anybody, that's such a big score and such a crazy pick. It would have been on Twitter. Better win seventy two thousand dollars picking the correct score. Like, that's the type of thing where the sports book tells the media, wow, somebody, like, yes. had 48-32 here because they get the publicity out of it. Yep. So, uh, I don't know. We'll get to the bottom of it. Sharapan's on the road right now. I wanted to ask you, uh, Julio, uh, being the uh, Chicago uh, resident that you were, yes. um, about the White Sox new uh, stadium project. So, uh, yes. this stadium is going to be um, off of uh, 16th, and this has been a parcel of field and land uh, that they call the the Loop 78 that, for whatever reason, has been undeveloped over the years. There's been talk about it, this and that, and they want to build a casino, like a lot of big cities, you know what I mean? 
casino, yes, no, and big, you know, red tape and who's in control of it and all this type of stuff. But with the Bears probably moving, you know, Chicago's got to, you know, they got to keep this thing rolling here and make this happen and not get in the way of any development about this. But it seems like the White Sox are pretty serious about this. And you obviously know the city a hell of a lot better than we do. But it seems to me that people locally really like the idea and think it's a great parcel of land and you're going to have a great skyline in the background of the stadium. What do you think about it? And Roosevelt Station's right there. There's trains yep. already there. Everything is in Good place. Call. People like the idea. What's your take? I was honestly stunned when I heard the news the other day because I was convinced in my head the team would move to Nashville. Uh, it's, 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 it's a big deal because they've always talked about moving – a team into downtown Chicago when the Sox had the opportunity, when they tore old Comiskey Park down, seems like it would have been a perfect match. Look, it's gotten people excited. Everyone's excited about this, but then it comes down to who's footing the bill, who's paying for this. City of Chicago, broke. State of Illinois, broke. Who's paying for this? Jerry Reinsdorf, rich, but doesn't want to pay. He's never wanted to pay for anything. Actually, when they build New Comiskey Park, they had a loophole where if the team didn't draw 3 million fans, rent-free. So there was really no incentive for Jerry Ryan to build That's insane. 3 million. Oh, That's a high cost. 3 million. Oh, Marissi, <laughs> you got to hire perfect. his lawyer. What a <laughs> deal. That's well, listen, let me just say that. this. 50 million guys. Let me just say, <laughs> I 100% am against, yeah. fundamentally, I think it's insanity that taxpayers and when the schools suck and everything sucks that you build a stadium for the owner of the Raiders or and all that it's preposterous like you know the people in Vegas the school system in Vegas is like barely better than Mississippi's all right like seriously they have they can barely pay their teachers and their their cops there yet they're building a stadium for the Oakland athletic owner who's a multi-billionaire that can build his own damn stadium it's the stupidest thing ever but at the same point in time, if you say no to it, you don't get a team. That's why the Expos left. The Quebec government was like, you're right, we're dude. not. You're on your own. You want to build a baseball stadium? Knock yourself out. <laughs> they said, we're not stopping you. They even said, we'll give you a deal on the land and the tax or whatever. But you're not. we're not paying you any money. We'll give you some yep. tax breaks. But we're not, you know what I mean? We're not doing anything for you. And then the team left. So you can't have it both ways. That's the thing. You know, That's what I'm saying. Well, the people in Chicago, who's going to pay for it? Don't cry if they move to Orlando if you don't want to pay for it. That's all I'm saying. Is it right? No. Is it right. fair? No. But that's the world we're in now. Yeah, I mean, they could lose them to their neighbors just up the road in Indiana. Gary, uh, East Chicago, Indiana, they want to bring the Bears. They want to lure the Bears over with a new stadium, maybe even bring the White Sox over. But it's it, the story's fantastic. A team downtown Chicago in the South Loop, right with public transportation, the skyline in the background. It's going to be beautiful. But who's going to pay for it? That's going to be the biggest story over the next couple of years. I'm not going to hold my breath in thinking that Jerry Reinsdorf will foot any sort of money, but time will tell. All right, let's get to the best bets. What do you like this week, uh, Julio? What do you got hey, for us in that uh, big, big head of yours? A lot of picks spinning around. No, he's wow. got a great head. It's full of brains. Dave, just quickly before Julio goes, the Leafs had an open net, and they missed the open net, and I, I'd like to four, investigate. Four? No, no, they won the game, but I, but for the one and a half, I, I think this oh. needs to be investigated. But let let, let Julio and his br- big brain uh, talk, and I'll deal with this tomorrow. This is ridiculous. All right. I've got one future for you guys, and that's the Minnesota PWHL team because they don't have a nickname yet. Uh, Minnesota to win the PWHL at four to one. They're in first place. And still at four to one number, the second or third favorite to win that league. Give me Minnesota four to one to win that league. Uh, let's Hold on, go let me to... ask you something. Right. Yes. How many? And I've been, I talked about. I threw out the futures last night. Actually, and it's still early, but we're starting. To, we're starting. To, it's starting yeah. to take shape a little bit. Like I said, Minnesota. They play close games. They have a great goalie, but they keep winning. Right. Yep. They haven't lost a game yet. Montreal are a pretty flashy team, actually. Like, they're almost like the Canadians. Like, they're built for, like, offense, and they got girls flying around. They play a really fast pace. 
Toronto can't get out of its own way. They keep losing late. Ottawa, same thing. They're struggling. New York's goalie was really good. But I, mm-hmm. and you're right, though. I like where you're going with this. Get a, get a head start on it. Minnesota are going to be – they look like the real deal. Plus, they have the best home ice advantage, too. They're getting like 9,000 people what? a game. Question to you guys: Is Minnesota Minx too racy? Like a Minx? That's a good goal, name. Like yeah, they wouldn't do that. Name. I like the name. But yeah. Yeah. That's a good name. Honestly, I, I come that, up but... with stuff that's good, but it's not. Well, really good. it's not going to work. That's I thought the, the same thing. They're, they're playing the Montreal team plays where the um, the Montreal Rocket play, the Laval Rocket, whatever, the Montreal Canadiens farm team named after Rocket Richard. And I was yeah. thinking it'd be perfect for the women's team, except the Rockets. Yeah, she's a real Rocket. rocket. Yes. I love you know I mean? that. The Rockette, the Montreal. Yeah. It's like they, they have, look, listening yeah, to it's, us part, the it's part like we're right? hot, but it's also part, yeah, we have a slap jaw like a rocket, right? Lay Rockettes. Yeah. The Minx is a good idea as well. Minx right? is like, good because uh, it's a mink coat, but it does not yeah, seem too sexy. Anyway, Julio, you tell no, me no, what no, you like. No, they don't like yeah. that. But no, I just want to ask, how long is the regular season? That was the question. Because how long uh, do we have to wait? I think it goes to March. Right here it is, schedule. Now, there's only six teams, so like, yeah, they, how many games can they really play? Minnesota's going to win it all. All right, goes to yeah, like you said, uh, in March. So yeah, when they you saw love- the playoffs are going to be in April. No, the regular season goes through to the end of April, actually, man. Oh, really? Wow. Yeah. Oh wow, the regular season ends May fifth. So these what? ladies are going to get—they're going to hate each other <laughs> by the time the we get to playoffs. Uh, oh March. my God, help us. That's the long season, man, for a 16 a league. Yeah. You're right, Gabe. I don't know how many times you get the games they play, but yeah. I think they play season. twice a week. Twice a week, it seems like. What yeah, you know what though? They're they're taking time off too, though, for the All Star break, the NHL All Star break, because yeah. they're playing at the All Star. There's a uh, there's like a PWHL All Star game that's going to be part of the oh, NHL All Star nice. festivities. I think it's going to be it's three on three though. So they're basically it's going to be like a you know, they're taking the best players and whatever a little showcase for the PWHL. Um, okay, so Minnesota to win. Um, what else do you got uh, going on, Julio? We didn't expect oh, a PWHL future, but we'll take it. All right. I love this guy. <laughs> hey, by the way, again, under five and a half goals, eleven and two on the season, over four and a half goals, ten and three. So books are playing. Books are now offering oh. over uh, four and a half on the total. So we're going to play the over, and then if we can get a goal in the first period, we'll jump into the under five and a half. And then we I get just banned keep by waiting. I won Rensky, last I'm gonna night. Give I just you keep waiting credit. for the start. They're four. You guys are on top of this in front of everybody. Like other people are. Oh, 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 oh. You guys have been gambling on this league like from the get go, and I can't lie dabble but you guys you guys are the real deal i give you a lot of credit good oh, it's work. good hockey and it's on tv yeah, too it helps I've, every time i, I watch the game, game tonight, i'm like oh it's on tv too like it's, those it's ladies on. are good hockey players man real good this is portrait Quarterback at quarterback. We're going to lay some juice. We're going to have some dog prices. We're going to go right in the middle. Because I don't know what they're doing. To me, they're in a complete rebuild, Kev. Go run, run, run. That's where overbackers on this 51 and a half shot. So right now, we saw a little bit more over money, but it's hovering right around. The winner of this game will be the division. Favorite. I don't care if they win because all we care about is the money, baby. The money. Pro football today. It's smarter to be on Sports Grid. Last year, the Purdue Boilermakers upset by the 16 seed Fairleigh Dickinson. Is history going to repeat itself? Purdue is capable of winning six games in the NCAA tournament, but the fact is, until Purdue proves that it's capable of not just advancing, but advancing far in the bracket in March, this is going to be the storyline, and I've said that to you throughout the offseason. The early line, only on SportsGrid.
And I tell you what, there's a million and one um, coaching vacancies uh, right now. Brady Cannon is a candidate for the Vegas Raider job. Like uh, there's, 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 so, there's so many jobs available right now. NFL teams are coming to the grid uh, for for our talent. Uh, so there's that many head coaching spots available uh, right now. I'm going to submit my uh, my resume. Sports Rage Late Night, only on Sports Grid. Anyone that's been to a sporting event, the atmosphere before a game, I think Game Time Decisions has that same exact atmosphere. This is our arena. This is what we do. There is going to be an energy to Game Time Decisions that you will feel night in and night out. The excitement you get when you, when you lock your bets and when you're figuring out what you want to do, we can zone in on the biggest games each night. I want this to be the place that people come to before the games start so they feel as ready as possible to lock in their cards. We are going to hit every single one of those markets that you need to know about. We're gonna go through every single thing and I've got a great team behind me that's gonna help me get the job done. There is not gonna be a better place, I promise you, than Game Time Decisions to get that new information, react to it, and be able to then bet accordingly. We will have everything at our disposal and we will use that to our advantage. I'm Kevin Walsh. Tune into Game Time Decisions from 6 to 8 p.m. Eastern on SportsGrid. This is Sports Rage. I am Rancy, and uh, I just heard Cam muttering Marty Bur- Martin Bur- Marty Buron for some reason. Martin Buron, former Buffalo Saber goalie, talking about the Buffalo Sabers, and uh, that guy's got the bluest eyes ever. Like he's on TV on TSN. I saw him tonight actually. Um, there really are like he like you said he looks like a wolf or something like that. That's like, the way he saw the, he saw the puck. Yep. Yep. It was a good conversation. They had him. What's the guy, James? What's his name? Uh, what's Noodles' his name? Jamie. Uh, uh, Jeff, o, Jeff O'Neill, and they had uh, Duffman. Did they have. Uh, no, Duff no. What's Jamie's the, name? His... Jamie. Uh, Jamie. Was it Jamie Thompson? No, what's his name, Jamie? No, 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 no. For, uh, it's Jeff O'Neill. For, 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 no. The Leafs? Or... Yes, I know it's Jeff O'Neill, the other guy, the goalie on the show. The goalie on the show. All right, McCl- forget uh, it. McCl- McClanahan. McClanahan huh? That's it, Jamie yeah, McClanahan. Yeah, 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 you, yeah. Jamie McClanahan. 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 Okay, McClanahan, I don't know what right. you're talking about. Sabres crew or Leafs crew? I'm trying to work this out here. Anyway, continue. Continue. Hey, it was, they were talking continue. about the best goalie mass ever. And um, it was a good It was a good little, uh, it was a good conversation they were having. But it was like three former NHL goalies, and they were going back and forth. What what's their favorite goalie mask currently? What did they like as a kid? What do they have and all this? It Very was a cool dangerous. conversation. None of them was as cool as mine though. When I was a kid, I had a custom mask. I made a goalie mask like Ace Freely of Kiss. Imagine nice with the star. Imagine, imagine being like twelve years old, like playing like hockey, and you got a Kiss mask on. <laughs> That's awesome, Gabe. That's amazing. No stitches. Yeah, I came up with the idea a... myself. My Good mother idea. did it for me. Yeah, my mother painted it. I was a kid. I was like nine. I said, oh, well, I'm like, I want to get into a goalie mask. Like the guy in Kiss, Mom. Like the guitarist, the Kiss. Ace Freely. So Wicked. I had to start. I, I had like the, the, the lightning and stuff. And I was going to get the star one after. Um, I wish I had it now. I lost it. It really pisses me off. All right, hang in here, Julio. Because we'll get your NFL picks. Cam's getting out of here. Cam will be on tomorrow night on the Friday Night Free Show with us. We'll really get it all, all the football games. Uh, Cam, let's hope that the um, the LA Kings can come back because they're sucking again I hope tonight. they win for you guys. 